Good day, viewers. You are welcome to the AU TV. Um, my name is Rafael Kute Jani, and I'm the host for the AU Talks for today. Um, today, I'm hosting Mr. Benjamin Deshawn. He's the acting chief executive of um, the Ghana Research and Education Network. You are welcome, Mr. Benjamin. Thank you, Rafael. Yeah. Okay, so our topic for today is um, the National Research and Education Network. We would want to know what it's about. So in a nutshell, can you kindly explain what the National Research and Education Network is all about? Yes, Rafa. Okay. To put it very simply, mm -hmm. uh, an NREN, or a National Research and Education Network, mm -hmm. is an organization which was established or which is established by the tertiary and research institutions within the country okay. in order to build a physical network mm -hmm. among mm -hmm. themselves using the commercial operators and so and so on and then and then because of that be able to facilitate collaborations among themselves uh -huh. and then with other parts and other institutions outside of the country okay yes okay so it's more or less like an isp internet service provider well it's like a more like a specialized isp okay because it's focused more on tertiary and research institutions or education institutions okay and then it provides other services apart from internet services it, it provides the, the 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 resources for them to collaborate among others okay. so so unlike an isp that just gives you the plain internet this this one, the NREN actually provides the internet services, uh -huh. but then also uh, uh, provides a lot of training and other, uh, what do you call it, collaborative tools okay. that allow the investors to share w w works together. And then w uh, uh, yes. Okay, so can one say um, the NREN is more, if you like, um, advanced than the internet? Well, you can say that the NREN is uh, a larger subset. Okay. Or you can say a, a, an NREN is parts, it's, it's 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 a form of it's uh, yes because the elements of the internet uh, as we know uh. which are part of the NREN uh. and actually the NREN is still actually predates the internet. Okay. So I'll get back to we are doing that. I mean the the establishment of the first NREN was actually led to what has led to the evolution of the internet. Okay. And the internet the word internet itself is a derivative of interim NREN. Okay. Which uh, yes w w w which I will explain later. Okay. Okay. So um, when was this started? When was the NREN started? Okay, so uh, like I said, this actually predates the internet itself. Mm. And this was in somewhere in the late 1960s. Okay. From the US when the Department of uh, Defense and its Defense uh, for Advanced Research and Project Agency w developed the first ARPANET, ap okay. which, which was a network, which was the first physical packet switching network in the US. Okay. Look, look, focusing more on on the collaboration of the research institutions w w within the country, mm. and then after that, it evolved from the f from the National Science Foundation, mm. and then looking at their super competing needs and uh, other things, and then and then later on, it just it, it has evolved to a point where now there are about 110 mm. different countries worldwide that have established NRENs in, in the country, and then many parts of Africa also ha have theirs, but then but then most of them are in the planning stages. Okay, okay. So um, um, what, 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 um, what is involved in achieving, um, if you like, the NREN? What are some of the, the benefits associated to using NREN? Okay, now w let's start from the basics okay. of how the NREN, uh, how it is in, in today's contemporary issues. Mm. It's at the very base of the NREN is what you have the institutions, as I said, campuses or research institutions that come together to form the NREN. Okay. And then... And then the idea is that once you have a, a body uh. that is looked at providing services to those uh, research, research institutions, uh. you can use economies of scale uh. to bring down certain costs of internet uh. and other services that, that run on it. Okay. Now, when you have one or two re regional NRENs that, that come together uh. to form what you call a regional network, uh. and then from our, from our part of the world, uh. there are three regional networks. You have the WACREN, which is the West and Central Africa Research Education Network okay. for West and Central Africa. You have the Ubuntu Net Alliance, which is for Eastern and Southern Africa. Mm. And then you have ASREN, which is for the, m for the Northern Africa and parts of the Middle East. Okay. Yes. Okay. So um, what, what, what is the criteria for selecting where the data center should be located? Okay. Now, the data center is one of the many derivative services that, can re that results as has to have the national I infrastructure. Okay. And, and I said that the first and foremost thing is that the NREN itself is an organization. Okay. So based on uh, the connect having the connectivity uh, available uh. nationwide, the, the data centers or so sources of information can be located at, at, at an institution or a commercial provider or some other entity that's uh. able to provide those services to the community. Because uh. the physical location really doesn't matter once you have a physical network that uh. interconnects all of them. Uh. The, the idea is to have a reliable, robust, uh. and efficient way 
for the universities to collaborate. Okay. And that is the function of the NREN. Okay. To, to actually to provide that network for the investors to collaborate. Okay, so in a nutshell, what would you say the objectives, specific objectives of NREN are? Okay, now this is, uh, mm. it might vary from country to country. Okay. Because, you know, worldwide, some are more advanced than others in Africa, some are well, uh, well you know, we are now well on that when it comes to internet penetration, internet mm. connectivity. But then one of the first major objectives is just basically to address the very expensive high, you know, the internet, con internet access to tertiary and research institutions within the country. Okay. And that is formed by uh, from our NREN. Uh, the other is to, is to look at to address the unreliable and poor <laughs> networks. Okay. Now, what happens is that you you will, you, will, you working with the commercial ISPs or mm. working with commercial partners, it's, a, it's not a, a competition between the NREN and the ISPs. It's more, it's more of a partnership okay. where the NREN is able to attract funding and resources to build the networks or and build the allow the commercial pay for the pay for the commercial networks. Okay. Commercial providers to to build the networks. Mm. And then the NREN will, will then would drive services from it. Mm. It's also to have a common platform, which, like I said, can you, you will allow institutions to, to collaborate. So, as you said, one might, one institution might have a very good data center mm. where service and information can be stored. Mm. And then, by virtue of having a physical network, other institutions can use it. Mm. One institution might might, have, might be good in providing e-learning services, content, or other 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 facilities or even scientific equipment mm. and analysis, which could be done you know, off the, off on the network mm. at, a, at, at a remote lo location. So, so basically, I, it, is the, it is the network that fosters this type of collaboration. And the main objective of, of, of the NREN is to make sure that these, mm. these functions and these collaborations can happen by having a physical network in place. OK. So what is involved in achieving these objectives? OK. Now, that's a good question because in the past, there's been various schools of thought about how to establish an NREN. Mm. Some thinking that it's, it's a technical initiative mm. and others thinking that looking at it from an organizational perspective. Basically, as I said, the, you, you, the NREN must be seen as an organization. And there are typical uh, of, uh, pillars of, of forming an organization. You must look at the governance of, of, the, of the organization. Who what is the governance mechanism mm. and what rules, uh, what are the functions and what they're supposed to achieve mm. and those other, 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 other objectives. So once you see from the perspective of an organization, then, then certain rules are applied to that. Okay, so who are the stakeholders of the errand? Okay, so like I, I, as I said earlier on, mm. it's, uh, it's, it was, it's the main stakeholders are its members. Okay. And its members are the tertiary and research institutions within the country. Okay. So, 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 so they are the key stakeholders. Other, obviously, the other related stakeholders, like the government, which, which, which makes who wants to ensure that the, the levels of education mm. at the tertiary level are improved and all those things. So, so they are stakeholders. And then there are also various service providers and various entities who, who n provide services uh, and of course, the AU itself is a, is a major, is a major <laughs> stakeholder yeah, because yeah, yeah. your key stakeholders are the, are the tertiary institutions <laughs> themselves. Yeah. So these are other various, but then the idea is that once that organization is formed, it's able to then provide those services to mm. the member, members. Mm. So are there any challenges associated to these end rents? Well, yes, obviously, like most organizations, there are, there are, there are, basic, there are, basic, uh, there are a lot of challenges. And to go, back to, the, to go back to the governance and the structure again, mm. first of all, uh, in the past, I had been seen as focusing more on infrastructure rather than looking at it from the organizational perspective. Okay. So that has led to uh, a lot of uh, activities that are being done, mm. which... Uh, which which ha which has not made this a, a lot. Uh, most of them have, are struggling to 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 uh, become sustainable. Mm. But once we moved it to the governance perspective, and mm. then having looking focus on the governance infrastructure, staffing, and then also the financing of it, mm. then 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 these are I'm trying to bridge the challenges and the objectives together so that we can we can uh, look. In the so so basically, yeah, what I'm saying is that mm. uh, what. And then, and so, 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 for example, the infrastructure, mm. like I said, is a partnership between the end and, and the and the incumbent or incumbents of various uh, uh, providers within the country. Mm. The staffing must that, that it must have full time staff mm. that are dedicated to uh, achieving the objectives of the end in, in in most cases, there are part time staff located at various universities or government agencies or group of uh, bodies. Which, which, which in the past has not led to, again, making it very sustainable. 
So when we break it down to that, and also it's also more of a financial management issue and administrative issue, and less of a technical or more, and also somehow also uh, uh, technical. Okay. And so this can be addressed once you have the proper staffing, infrastructure, governance in place. Then, then the ability to source for funding to pay for the networks, and then this <laughs> goes on. Okay. Okay, so so what is the way forward to, um, if you like, solving some of these problems that you've just stated? How do you think we can, the government, or how do you think we can actually mend all these problems that you've just stated? Well, for well, taking from the best uh, examples of the 110 uh, entrants in, in the world, mm. this is, is a, first of all, I, I said that it's a step up as an as a as an independent organization, mm. uh, membership driven. But government supported. Okay, that is the best formula for for for, 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 for overcoming some of the for, for achieving their objectives. So you have a membership who are active and demanding services. You have support from the government and other re regulatory agencies to ensure that those things are, are done. Mm. Then, when it comes to the 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 financing, the best way is to look at separating the capex or the capital expenditure of building the network from the operational expenses of the network, mm. where the capital expenditures are paid for by government, partners, donor agencies, or any other body to ensure that those, those membership can be saved. And then, and then also ensuring that the operational expenses of the NREN mm. of the members, uh, the, the, the operational expenses can be supported by the mm. subscriptions and the membership uh, payment of services which, which, which is being rendered by the, by the, by the really rendered to the, to, to the members. Okay, so, so who owns the the NREN. Okay. Uh, simply put, the members own the NREN. Okay. If to put it very simply and, and bluntly. But, that, but, that, but, I, but then like I said, it's, it is more of uh, there are various stakeholders in ensuring that it happens. Mm. And the NREN must be accountable to all the various stakeholders inc including to including its, its, its members. Okay. So uh, my understanding is that the NREN is a centralized network. Mm -hmm. So does it does it allow students and all um, other stakeholders to have access to it? Yes, that's that comes down to the campus level. Okay. Because you know the students ha have access at the campus level. Mm. The NREN provides connectivity and other services to the campus. Okay. So there are various forms of uh, services that can be run. Okay. The most predominant one or the most common one, which is actually what leads the NREN formation, is in the pricing of internet. Okay. Bring down the cost of internet, okay. and then being able to bring down the cost of internet to a point where you are able to afford gigs of data rather than megs of data, okay. uh, as, as part of the world. So then, at, a, at that level, then the students then benefit from such uh, fast and reliable co connectivity. The other one is having federated identity systems, which allow the researchers and the academicians and within the campus to ha gain access to other data across within their own country and, and, and other uh, research education networks worldwide. And these are some of the services. And there are, and there are a host of other services which the NREN provides. Okay. So both at the national level, both at the campus level, mm. and some of it even at, at, at the regional level. Okay. Well, viewers, if you just joined us, this is the AU TV, the voice of higher education in Africa. This is the AU Talks, and we've been discussing um, the National Research and Education Network and my guest here is uh, Mr. Benjamin Nishon. He is the acting chief executive of the Ghana Research and Education Networks. Okay, so um, back to you, Mr. Benjamin. Um, so what would you say, <coughs> how would you advise government to, 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 to take part in, in, in the NREN? Yes, no, uh, like I said, government, NREN, no, no NREN can mm. survive or achieve much without government support. Government. Because don't forget that uh, in, in our part of the world, they are mostly public, which are public universities and mm. private universities and other quasi universities, which are government supported, okay. and then and then the, the private ones. All. But then, in, in a nutshell, it, it's all uh, the nationals of the country who, who benefit, whether in public or private. Okay. So, so, so government's interest to promote higher education, mm. the one of the best ways, or, or, or from my personal pr perspective, mm. is to support the NREN. Okay. Support the NREN it could be financial. Or could be in terms of l legislation okay. or waiving of certain rights, waiving of certain, making it easier for the NREN to function, waiving of certain taxes and levies, all those things, make it function, or giving the right 
licenses. So government assistance is key to, to the survival of any, any NREN because it's, it's for the national good. Okay. And and the e and then the national and because it was for the it's a national good or uh, uh, this is for national good then governments should be interested in promoting the activities of the NREN and then Ghana we have very strong support for the NREN from the Ministry of Education and and other sectors of, of government. Okay. So one may ask that why National Research and Education Network? Why not maybe Regional Research and Education Network or Global Research and Education Network? Well, well, like everything else, you start in, in silos. As I said, there are Regional Research and Education Networks okay. that exist. Where, and, and, and they exist because when National and Research Education Networks uh, are f come together to form a, such a body. Mm. And I and I explained how how the three of them in Africa exist, but then but then but then in Europe the, there's a regional network that covers the whole of Europe called a giant, mm. and then in in the U.S. In, in, in the United States there's a regional network that covers the whole United States called Internet Two, mm. the same for Asia Pacific and then and then other parts of the world. Mm. So these regional uh, regional NRENs, regional we regional RENs exist. And they actually foster collaboration among themselves, mm -hmm. so that it's, it's 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 possible for institutions in Africa to collaborate with institutions in the, in in, uh, in Europe or in America or or Asia or any part of of the, of the world. Okay. So where do we get content from? Content is from the tertiary institutions. Okay. And there are content providers, and there are tertiary institutions that provide content. The idea is that once once you provide the content then the content can be shared among the network for everybody to use. And when I say it, it can be shared among the network. So, so one particular institution might have, might have a very good material for teaching particular courses. Mm -hmm. And then by having such a private network, it's easy to share such, such, such information. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the research part of it, there are what you call large data sets in which can be accessed by researchers in order to formulate new theories or for okay. lo look at new proposals or new s solutions and then or a new analysis of the data okay. and these data can be located from depending on where the source are located okay. it can be from anywhere in the world okay. but the idea but then but then but then the, the point of thing is that you must have the network which is which is reliable and 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 cost effective enough for you to access the, those data okay. because s some of those data can be in, in in the hundreds of, of gigabits yeah and and then with poor networks, it will be virtually impossible to actually pull to, to pull to pull that pull that data down, or for you to send that data across. Across, okay, okay. I think that is a good one. So, um, um, what, what, how how would you say that? Um, so after the data is has been stored in the NREN or we having the, the data in the networks, when we want to pull this data, as you are saying, it will be cheaper compared to the internet. Is that the case? Yes, what I'm saying is that the network, the speed, the access to the network mm. would be faster, faster and cheaper. Faster and cheaper. cheaper. Yes, that's what we're currently having. Okay. Because currently there's a, a disparity between the, between the, connect, the, the, the internet pricing okay. of, of, uh, of in within Africa and, mm. and the other those of the developed world. Okay. And sometimes it's almost, I mean, more than 100 times what we're currently paying for, okay. for, 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 for smaller amount of, of 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 capacity, okay. so so and the only way to achieve bring down the cost significantly is to form a, a national network, okay. then buy huge capacities which is called RRUs, okay. for for p that means paying advance for fifteen years twenty years in advance, mm. and then that would bring down the cost of connectivity w within the country, and also looking at the regional p p perspective, then you could then <laughs> negotiate at that side looking at the number of countries involved, and there are several in initiatives which are currently uh, ongoing to achieve that. So, so it will be a collaborative effort, actually? Yes, it, it has to be a collaborative because the nature of an NREN is, is a collaborative uh, organization. That's an NREN by its nature itself must yes. foster collaboration. Okay. So, so, so then that is, so th and so that is the way in which it will be done together, both at the national level and, and at the regional level and then even at the global level. Wow, that is good, that is good. Okay, viewers, so we've had a good time with um, Mr. Benjamin Ishon. Do you, um, would we like we would like to take your last comments on um, to conclude the show? Oh, okay. Mm. Yes, basically, just to I, I guess I'll use my just to re recap, mm. and the recap and the what, what what I want to drive the point across is that uh, for those countries which are emerging or trying to establish their NRENs, mm. 
they must they must view it as an organization mm -hmm. first and foremost rather than a technical uh, uh, in intervention to achieve a result. Mm -hmm. once, once you view it as an organization, then you're able to get the, 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 the required resources mm -hmm. and financing and, and other stuff to achieve the network. Okay. Yes, and not the other way around. Because, because so, and that organization will, should be manned by full-time staff mm -hmm. with, with, the, with, with the main objective of making sure that the NREN is able to de deliver on his on uh, on his on his promises, and then be able to serve I its members. Okay, okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Benjamin and Sean. Thank you very much. Okay, so hello viewers. This brings us to the end of the show, and we'll meet you same time next week. Thank you. <laughs>